Okay, so we're going to look at how we might light Blood Brothers. So the task that we're going to be looking at today is lighting task one on Firefly. Okay, so the video will be in there, but if you're watching it through YouTube, it's going to be on the Firefly task two. So we're looking at how the light falls on actors' faces. What does the light suggest? How is the light in Blood Brothers lighting up scenic elements, maybe the flats, maybe the cyclorama is lit? And how is it creating mood and atmosphere and doing all the things that lighting can do? Quick reminder. So when we're using lighting, these are the ingredients we can use. We've obviously got colour. So that might be steel blue. It might be warm amber. It might be, you know, deep red. There's lots of different colours that you can use. But also the colour scheme that you choose is very important too. Is it two-tone? Is it monochromatic? Lots of ways that you can use colour. Think about the focus of the beam. Um, the type of light that you use will give the beam a different shape or a different edge. So a profile light, remember, can be changed from a hard edge or a soft edge. A Fresnel light gives a quite a, a narrow beam. So you have to have lots of them if you're using Fresnels, uh, but they give a very soft, fuzzy edge too. Um, LEDs give you, um, if you use an LED power can, it will give you a big wash, like floodlights will give you a big wash. So depending whether you want to have a small or a wide beam, a soft or a hard edge, you'll be thinking very carefully about the lights that you can select. Then thinking about the position and the direction, where you hang the light will really affect the way it falls onto the actor and onto the stage. So if the light is low down and you are up lighting, you're going to get shadows on the face and the body and shadows behind. If you down light, the light is really going to fall on top of the actor's head and shoulders. It has the effect of making people look a bit smaller. Um, side light is going to light half the face or half the body. Front light is just a general sort of um, maybe like a, a horizontal or not too steep a, an angle so that the, the actor is lit and there aren't too many shadows. Backlight is obviously the light is behind the actor lighting up their back and you get sort of a halo effect there. You can put a backlight on with front lights, with other lights, and it will give a really 3D effect. But if you just use backlight without any other lights, that's when you get your halo. Then thinking about the intensity, the brightness or the dimness of the light, that's measured in percentages. So if it's 10 percent, 20 percent, it's dim. If it's 80, 90, 100 percent, it's bright. Then moving on to texture, have you got any fog in there, anything to highlight the beams? There is some fog in this picture on the right or some haze that is sort of giving us the shape of those beams. You might want that or you might not. You might want the beams to sort of just blend away so we see the light itself. Have you got any gobos used on stage? Obviously, this picture here has got gobos, and lots of circles coming together. Have you got a gauze, which is a very thin curtain that might be hanging on stage, or it might be covering a window in a window flat? Have you got a cyclorama, so the back wall or the back backdrop? Maybe that is lit um, or it's projected onto. Then thinking about special effects. Have we got any practical lights on stage, like a street lamp or a, a desk lamp, or maybe there are lights within the set, maybe lighting up the window flat, maybe the windows are, are backlit, maybe we've got little practical lights in the cyclorama, all sorts of ways we can use practicals. Is there a strobe? Have you got a UV light? Is there a chase sequence planned where the, the lights sort of bounce and chase each other around? It could be giving you a disco effect or movement. It, it really helps with pace. Um, are the audience being blinded by the light quite literally at any point? Have you got any animation or projection? And then moving on to the last ingredient we can use, we can think about how the lights transition from one state to another. And we use fades for that. So it could be a snap, which is instantly a fade just like you would use with your lights in your house when you switch a light switch on and off, it's instant. Or are you going to have a fade up or a fade down? How many seconds might that last for? Is it a crossed fade? So, so a cross fade will be one lighting state blending seamlessly into another. Are we having any blackouts? So let's see if we can apply some of these ideas now to what a lighting designer has done with this moment of Blood Brothers. We've got Edward. Um, he is crying on Mrs. Johnston's knee and she is trying to comfort him. 
In the background there, we can see the narrator on a higher level, quite close by, but the characters aren't obviously aware of him. And if we look at the lighting on him, we can see his side lit. So just his right side of his face is lit and the left side of his face is in, in shadow. So that is taking the focus off him. He's not in the bright beam there, but he is definitely somebody who is. Sorry, apologies about that. The postman came and banged the door really loudly. So if we're thinking about the, the way the narrator is lit, he is actually out of the main beam, but he was side lit. Now that gives him sort of a watchful, observant, suspicious sort of look to him. Maybe he's someone who is judging all the time. So he's judging Mrs. Johnston here. Um, the shadows are really sort of giving him a completely different atmosphere. This is the background. Maybe it's the ideas lurking in her own mind. Maybe it's the questioning that the audience are supposed to be doing. So the side lighting really helps us to, to sort of get that. Her lighting is in, in full beam, so she's got a mixture of front lighting and side lighting, giving her that 3D effect, and there aren't really any shadows on her. So I'm thinking here that maybe some barn doors were used because she's so well lit that maybe the barn doors at the top of the light are stopping the spill going onto the narrator because he's, he's only lit by that bit of side light. So it's really interesting to think about how the lighting designers have done that because it's quite hard to stop light just going where it wants to go. So the barn doors have probably just blocked that bit off there. So it's a nice warm colour. We can see that she's warm, she's happy, um, she's bonding with, with Edward. Um, this is the locket scene. And really it's giving us that sort of glow. It's a, a moment of hope, a moment of warmth and bonding with her own son who she's never really seen. This light here, we can see there are two distinct colours used. So this is the moment where Sammy, who's holding the gun, goes and holds up the garage. Um, we've got the blue in the background and we've got the warm sort of amber. These two colour schemes are used a lot. So blue and amber really do go well together. It's the sort of light that we were used to seeing on, on the streets if you're out in, you know, walking in winter time and uh, you see the sort of dark blue sky and then we see the street lamps, the orange lit up against it. We're used to seeing that colour scheme. Sometimes it can appear quite warm. We might see little lights in people's houses, the warm lighting of the houses against the sort of dark blue of the night. In this particular moment, Obviously, the blue is really giving us a backdrop to the criminal action that he's doing here. The haze, the smoke, the fog. And we've got that really picked up by Mickey's facial expression here. The questioning of what he's done. This moment, this pivotal moment, the decision is made, changing the rest of his life. So we've got the warm amber lighting falling on the brick. And to contrast that, we've got the blue LED, very saturated colour, um, being lit. So we've got quite a wide beam, I would say maybe it's an LED park on or something like that, lighting the stage and the fog is really suffusing the stage. So it's like a blue fog light. But as we know, it's done by a light and a fog machine. So this gives us a real backdrop to Sammy and to Mickey. And blue is the colour of the police and the law. So maybe that sort of symbolically is there too. So I've done a bit of a, uh, an analysis here. Again, this is like A-level standard, really. You don't need to go into it this much, but it's quite nice to know, you know, what would be like a, a full mark and beyond answer. OK, well, let's have a little look. This is the the narrator is is on the stairs. He's obviously singing at some point. Um, we've got the archways. Very interesting. We've got all the different people in all of the different costumes from the 1950s. Um, let's analyse the lighting. So I'm going to work round the descriptions that I've written here. You'll notice there are some blue and sort of ambery yellow arrows. They are the directions of those colour lights. Um, so at the top here, we've got dappled and dimly lit effect. I would say it's multiple Fresnel lights. They're not huge wide beams. There's lots of Fresnel lights. Maybe they're at different intensities to give a dappled effect. And they're closed off with barn doors, maybe to prevent spill. So we've got blue blobs. We've got orange blobs to use sort of a layman's term. So it's done with a, a smaller light. Moving over to the right there, we've got an, a light amber front light on the narrator and it's sort of coming down from the arrow that I've put there. It makes him a point of focus. The light spills either side um, just where his hands are onto the arches. So it sort of lights up that general area. 
Again, I am guessing what the lighting designer has done here. So I'm saying 50% intensity. Um, we've got a two colour scheme, just funny enough, like the, the one we saw with, with Sammy robbing the garage. We've got warm amber and steel blue. Maybe we could say here, it's symbolising the hope and the despair of the working class. So it could symbolise the middle and the working class. Read into it what you will. On the right side there, we've got obviously the blue and the, the sort of amber Fresnel beams coming down. Um, I noticed as well something quite interesting. You look at the floor here, we've got we've got like a little black box just in front of the actor's legs. Now, this is some warm light at floor level and it's actually lighting up the legs of the actors. Why the legs? Well, maybe the moment of them walking around is really interesting and the light is, is directed at the legs to catch that. So all of the movement of the legs is really well lit. And then on the floor, we've got a steel blue wash. So we can see that this lighting state is made up of lots of different lighting um, choices. We've also got sort of the ceiling there. It looks like it's made of some sort of glass and it's backlit. Okay, so uh, backlit with blue. All of them come together and make this lovely state. And now over to you, we're going to look at Mickey and Eddie making the bond. Remember this moment, they cut their palms. Well, in fact, Mickey does it for both of them and they put their palms together. And this handshake here, this pivotal moment means they are blood brothers. After being separated by their mothers, they have come back together again. So it's a really important moment. OK, so what what we need to do is really think about the purpose of our lighting in this moment. Let's remind ourselves we can have lots of different purposes. So let's just go through them now. It's easy stuff. First of all, we need to see them. They need to be visible. But obviously, we don't want to flood the stage with bright light. So it just looks a bit boring. Sometimes we might think about the time of day. Is the time of day important in this? Maybe not. Maybe the moment itself is more important than the time of day at which it's taking place. So we might not even think about that in this moment. The location and the setting, well, it's almost like they're in their own world, a bit like they're in their own time of day. So for this particular moment, the lighting might not show the location or the setting. Um, we sometimes think about the period. Is it modern or historic? Again, I don't think we'll really consider that in this moment. It's more about the magic of the bond that they've made. Do we want the lighting to give pace to the play at this moment? Possibly we might want to change the pace and really slow it down because we've just had Mickey and Eddie, uh, you know, chatting and getting excited about swear words. And then suddenly they go to this moment of the bond. The pace really slows down. We might choose to do something with the lighting for that. The style of it. I think we're definitely going non-naturalistic here uh, for this moment because we're really drawing out the, the bond. Um, so it's not going to be set in a street anymore. The lighting isn't going to do that. The lighting will just go to the power of this moment. So it really does free up the ideas we can use. We've really got to focus the audience's attention on just them. We don't want to be thinking about the rest of the set. We want to really draw in the focus to, to just show them. We do often want the lighting to illuminate set and character details. As I've said, I doubt we're going to be illuminating set. It's just about illuminating them. Maybe their emotional world, the bonding, the magic of them coming back together. We also want it to look aesthetically pleasing. We want it to look good. So let's see some examples of how this has been done in two different productions of Blood Brothers. Again, don't be afraid to experiment with, with using lighting vocabulary. So think the words, write them down, say them. It's OK. It took me years to, to get these lighting terms into my own vocabulary. And I'm not even always saying that I get them right now. But it's better than not trying. Let's just have a go. OK, so you try. We've got this moment here from one particular production of Blood Brothers. OK. Looking at the light in there. So we can see one light is used. It's a down light. It's a soft edge profile beam. Very simple. And it's highlighting their, their wrists and their, their arms and particularly their hands. It's down lighting them so you can see where the light is falling on top of the head and the shoulders and their arms. This is the most important part. We're not interested in lighting their legs and feet. And then this particular one. OK. Same, obviously, it's the same picture, but how we might use words to describe it. So the twins are lit by a profile spotlight, soft edged. What sort of intensity? I don't think it's 100 percent. I might say personally, I might go for like it's lit at about 50 percent. 
the direction it's coming from above, so it's down lighting, and it's got the effect of enclosing them in this circle, almost like a magic circle that they've created. And here we go, the next one. So this is a different production of Mickey and Eddie. You can see Mickey on the right, completely different. Okay. So we've got lighting coming from multiple directions. If you look closely, I think we've got a bit of amber in there and a bit of blue. Very common, isn't it? We're seeing it a lot probably without realising. So we've got some uh, some backlight in there. We can tell because the lights are behind them. Uh, we've got blue, we've got amber, we've got smoke. Again, the fog or haze, we would call it. So the fog and haze is, is lit. It's sort of giving it this celestial feel. This is the clouds. Maybe this is heaven. This is a, a magical moment. And they are lit against the bank of fog. So it's very different. But again, the light is really focused on, on them, on their faces, on their arms. Although probably a side light behind Mickey is just casting a shadow onto the hand itself. So that isn't lit. So. What I want you to do is think about which is the most effective lighting, which one do you like best? So go to question one of the Firefly task and argue your case. You might want to pause the video to do that. So now we're moving on to a different moment in Blood Brothers. We can see we've got two different Mrs. Johnstons from two different productions and they are lit differently. Have a little look and think. One on the left, Mrs. Johnston is lit by coolish sort of white. Um, she's sort of lit from a couple of angles, but there's possibly a bit of shadowing on her. Um, we can see that the set is also lit. We've got some sort of shadow on the set. Then there's a, a brighter Brunel light just at the edge of that picture. We've also got the backdrop of Liverpool, the skyline, and it's blue and it's mottled. So it's a general sort of white light on her, a coolish white. I wouldn't say it's too warm. The one on the right, she's lit with red and it's down, down lighting and side lighting because we can, and back lighting, we can see it's sort of giving her a bit of a glow behind. Okay. So your job for question two, argue which is the best lighting. Which one do you like best for Mrs. Johnston? Let's just imagine the scene. It could be the moment where the bailiffs have just been in and just taken all the, the goods out of a house. You might want to think of it as, as that scene or it could be anywhere in the play well that while she's still got Mickey as a baby. You might want to pause the video while you do this. And then pick it up for the next task. So question three, we're going to describe all the lighting that is used in, in this moment. Now, again, you're still learning this. So we're going to try and sort of go through it together and then you can go to the Firefly task question three and write it all in. OK, so we can see that we've got a two or three colour scheme there, we could say. We've got the amber, we've got the, the deep blue and then we've got the brighter blue. OK, so three colour scheme, I would say. The cyclorama, let's look at the back first of all. We've got a cyclorama that is given a wash, a general wash, and this, this, this sort of deep blue wash covers the stage as well. What's it made with? It could be with uh, power cans with gels, or it could be an LED wash. Um, maybe it's flood lighting, but certainly it's something that's got, that has to have barn doors on to stop the light from spilling everywhere else. Okay, so within the cyclorama, we can see We've got the blue wash. We've also got these tiny little orange practical lights that are sort of lighting up little houses that are, are painted onto the cyclorama. So warm amber pinprick lights, practical lights to give the impression of houses. And then let's come on to the stage area now. We've got left and right. We've got some door and window flats giving the impression of a house. We've got a balcony as well there. We can see that these flats are lit from within. So they're sort of backlit with this, this very deep amber. Um, it's sort of orangey red colour. So deep amber. Um, and that's lighting within the houses and also lighting the backs of some of the, the actors on stage. 
Let's go to the two bodies now on stage. They are individually lit by a fractured gobo. One is vertical, one is horizontal, we could say. Um, and it's really helping us to see the, the bodies. If we didn't have that light in there, they were just part of the blue wash, we wouldn't see them as clearly. So it's really enabling us to see that. OK, so two fractured gobos. At different angles are supposed to delineate the bodies, to separate them. Some productions might choose to have the bodies uh, side by side and the boys' hands or the men's hands holding each other. It's you know entirely up to the designer. And then there's actually another gobo. If you look to the right of the picture, so that would be stage left, just in front of the window flap, we can see a man with a hat and a woman um, with, a, with white on. And we can see there's a gobo on them. Now, the angle of that must be from the top left of the picture, maybe shining down. So the gobo is a fractured gobo again. It's in white. It sort of really does emphasise the onlookers, the people who are watching this. So everyone becomes an onlooker, just like the narrator has been all the way through. OK, so your task now, go back to the, the Firefly question, question three, describe the lighting that's used. OK. Um, any details that I've not put in there, feel free to add in. OK, thank you very much.